Welcome to Pathways of Hope. I am Lorna Campos. In today's Gospel, Luke 20, verses 27 to 40, there is an encounter of Sadducees, some of the Sadducees, and Jesus. They're having this conversation. And take note of the Sadducees. They were really out to get Jesus. It says right there, they do not believe in the resurrection from the dead. And yet, they asked Jesus, Jesus, whose wife will this person be, this woman be, who has to marry the seven brothers and who are childless? It, it's, it's a ridiculous question. It's actually meant to trap Jesus so that Jesus would say, ah, there is no resurrection from the dead. But take note at the end of the, of the account, some of the scribes say, teacher, you have answered well. And then they were quiet. Amazing how Jesus, you know, turned them around from a group, some of them not believing and out to, to just make fun of him, to some after the conversation who brought to reflect. So what does Jesus do? He steps back. And rather than, you know, get caught in the nitty-gritty, he steps back and gives a wider perspective of the resurrection. He says, in the resurrection, there is no more need for marriage. People will live as angels, as children of the resurrection. So what's the impact on us? What does that mean? Is Jesus saying marriage is unimportant and no more need for it? There are many scriptures that talk about the analogy, the metaphor of the church as the bride of Christ and how marriage is the union and shows the intimacy of love of God for his people. There are just so much love and sacrifice and sweetness. And think of, try to think of someone, a married couple whom you uh, look up to and are inspired by their life together. And imagine all that love, joy, triumphs, victories, packed all together. And then there's something even more better than that. When Jesus says in the resurrection, there is no more marrying, it's because there would be so much more than what marriage offers us today. So much love and sacrifice and intimacy, all of it fulfilled in the resurrection. Wow. I mean, there's just so much to contemplate. The church and the gospels at these times invite us to reflect on the end times, on what is to come. And as we reflect on the resurrection from the dead, as we reflect on heaven, on the kingdom to come, what could be the impact for our life today? Perhaps as we reflect on the resurrection, it could give us renewed hope. A very dear friend of mine, her mother is suffering from severe dementia. And it's so painful and awkward for her to see her mother going through these things. And what she holds on to is the hope that in the kingdom to come, there will be no illness of mind and body. It gives her a renewed hope to care for her mother and hope things will be better. There will be so much more in store for her mom for her, for you and me. As we reflect on heaven, on the resurrection, it can impact our life today and give us a new lift, a new boost, new energy, because we know we are not for this world alone. As we reflect on the resurrection, perhaps it would give us more patience, more patience to relate to people, more patience to teach others, because we recognize what we do will have an eternal impact. Our actions, our lives will have eternal impact on others and so many. What's the impact we want to make? And as we reflect on the resurrection, perhaps it could give us more courage to do the morally right thing because we will be held accountable. The gospel says, for those who are worthy to be called the children of the resurrection. 
we will be held accountable for our actions. So contemplating on heaven, I will choose to do today the morally right thing. For I want to be part of those called to be worthy of the children of the resurrection. Let us live our lives today very aware of our tomorrow and knowing that we are made for something and somewhere else and not only for this world, may we live our lives with renewed hope, with more patience, and with courage to do the right thing. God bless.